here's your host, John Chapman. What is up, Faithful? Oh my gosh, I am so excited about today. Uh, one, I just hope everybody is ready to go today as I am. I see the Countdown crew is in the house, and I'm excited about that. Uh, we're going to do a couple things today we've never done before. Uh, this is going to be a long podcast. I am so excited about this. Um, <laughs> as press conferences have returned, as the season is underway, as news is all over the place, we have so much to talk about. So buckle in, because <laughs> we are just talking 49ers football and NFL, and I have probably the biggest announcement in the history of the 49ers Rush podcast, which this is episode 276, I believe. Uh, so this is our fourth year moving into the 2020 season, and Again, I can't say this enough. Uh, here within the next probably three to four minutes, I'll be sharing probably one of the things I'm most proud of that we have accomplished here. So please hang tight for that. We're going to go over news, uh, the huge announcement, which I'm so excited about. Uh, then we're going to go over opt-outs, COVID, salary cap, and then we're going to jump into the player press conferences, which we have had so many. We're going to be sharing clips from those. Jimmy Garoppolo, Fred Warner, Mostert. Bosa, Trent Williams, and his massive freaking arms. Uh, man, if you have not seen the video, just hold tight. And for all of my uh, auditory-only listeners, just want to let you know, uh, as we go through this, we are going to be showing video clips of the press conferences and things like that, but the audio is still going to be there for you as always. But again, I always recommend the best way to listen to this podcast or to watch this podcast is YouTube or Hot Mic, uh, which Rush ESF is our invite code, which is free there. So thank you so much for joining us. So let's start out with some bad news, okay? And here's the deal. We, we got to get this out of the way. The 49ers had two players opt out, and one of them came down to the wire, and I totally get it. The first of which was Travis Benjamin, okay? Travis Benjamin opts out. Um, and here's the issue. <laughs> um, he signed a one year, $1 million deal and he was a roster guy, roster bubble guy anyway. Then DJ Reed get, or sorry, then Richie James gets hurt, which kind of helps his stock out just a little bit. But with Travis Benjamin opting out, the financial considerations are this, he's going to get $150,000, um, basically, Front is what they're calling it, and that's going to count against his cap next year. His entire contract will be pushed to the 2021 season. So he's only going to count 900000 against the cap next year, only one fifty this year. They just changed the way that they're doing that. And you've got to respect people that are opting out. They're choosing family and health over football. More power to them, okay? But the football implications for the 49ers is what we want to focus on. This is huge. Trent Taylor's role in this offense just got catapulted, which it was already really, really high. It's been very obvious that Kyle Shanahan is hoping to adapt the slot role into two different things. He wants the small, shifty slot guys like Travis Benjamin, even though he can play outside. He has played outside uh, before. But Trent Taylor, small guy, speed guy inside. Or big slot, Juwan Jennings, Jalen Hurd come to mind. Well, now Richie James is out. Um, Travis Benjamin opted out. It looks like they're going to be <laughs> basically Trent Taylor or Jalen Hurd and Jawan Jennings in that slot role, and it's really a matchup thing. If you're playing against a team that's going to put a big, giant nickel out there, well, then you want a small, shifty guy. If you're going to play against a team that puts a small, shifty nickel out there, well, then you want to put a big guy out there. It allows you the leverage and versatility to scheme into exactly what Kyle Shanahan wants to do with his life, which is positionless football and mismatches. That's what he wants to do. Um, so this is interesting there. Um, now also, up to the wire, Sean Coleman uh, opted out as well, who he's been with the 49ers for three years, and he has never played one snap. Um, stop me if you heard this before, but uh, he opts out. Now, here's the deal. Sean Coleman had to fight against leukemia two years ago. So don't come out and say, oh, man, he should. No, he's making the correct choice. Um, you know, he would have been in competition for the swing tackle, but luckily the 49ers have a lot of depth there. You can never have too much depth at the offensive line, especially the tackle position, but you still have Justin School there. 
uh, who's probably going to be that. You still have McKivitz. You still have Daniel Brunskill. There's plenty of tackle depth, and I wouldn't be shocked if they go out and bring in another tackle to compete as well. So you've lost those two, and again, Sean Coleman's deal is basically one year for just under a million dollars, 962000 Now, because of his severity of battling leukemia, he'll get three fifty. Up front, but that 350 will go against um, this year's cap, not next year. So that 350 is deducted from his 962 for the 2021 cap. And again, both of these guys were going to be free agents. Now they're not. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with those two players. We lost those two players. Um, and then sticking with the bad news because we got to get the bad news out of the way before we get crazy hyped. I'm so excited. Uh, um, DJ Reed. Um, you know, he goes forward, he tears his, uh, peck and the 49ers waved him hoping that they would be able to get, he'd clear waivers. They bring him back, stash him on IR and have him come back. Uh, well, sure enough, John Schneider, you a hole, <laughs> they claim him in Seattle. I'm curious to see if he's going to make their roster though. Cause even though he could play in November, they're going to have to use a roster spot up against him, or they'll have to wave him, and then he'll have to go through the whole process again. Uh, usually we still there players. Uh, we'll talk a little bit um, ahead about Dion Jordan and kind of what that means. But I want to pause now. I'm so excited, guys. Um, you know, we worked all off season. I I, I haven't. I, I kept a lid on this because I wasn't sure how far it was going to go and what it would turn out. But I'm pumped. We started a docu series for the 49ers. It's called The Quest for Six. Uh, if you want to go check it out, it's called TheQuestForSix.com. We are going to be having our first episode series come out next Thursday night. Okay, at 6 p.m. We're going to set up an entire thing. Um, we're going to put a promo on it. We're going to do some giveaways, whatever else. So we, we wanted to do this docu-series on just the 49ers. And so we went through media, <laughs> podcasters, journalists, uh, writers, uh, you name it, we covered it. And some of the top of the top, I mean, just people that cover the team. And we went back through film and we did all this. So I wanted to lead, this is the first debut of the trailer uh, that I'm going to play for you guys here. And again, for my audio people, it's only going to be about uh, 60 seconds. So just hold tight. We'll be right back. Um, but yeah, so so excited so please make sure you join us because whenever we do our kind of event the very first event our first chapter as we're going to be calling it we're going to have a live q a afterwards as well and, and you know I, I went back and forth on this idea of should we just do like a huge hour hour and a half long documentary or should we chop it up so that we can kind of savor it a little bit more and we decided to chop it up um, and just do a chapter-based approach. Our first chapter is over the great Nick Bosa, so you're going to be super excited about that, just about his journey, what he's been through, behind-the-scenes looks, and things like that. But without further ado, uh, I wanted to come out, and I wanted to share for you, share this with you guys. I'm really excited about this, so uh, here we go. Uh, the Quest for Six trailer, here we go. Less than two minutes left, no timeouts. If Rodgers is going to do anything, it's now. Rodgers back to pass. Airs it out. Puts it deep. Intercepted. 49ers intercepted. That's Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman <laughs> comes up with his fourth career postseason interception. And that's going to do it. The 49ers are going to win. And the 49ers are bound for Miami. Super Bowl bound, baby. All right. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm a little jazzed up, drinking too much coffee today. I'm ready to go. But I really do think that this is going to be a very unique uh, perspective just on the process. And yeah, we're going to go over the Super Bowl. We have a chapter to dedicated to that. It hurts. And I think it's something we need to dive into. You got to live those through because the quest for six continues. And that's what we're all here for. You know, as 49ers fans, one of the greatest franchises in all of professional sports, I don't care what sport you're talking about, the, <laughs> the glory days are ahead of us. 
Uh, you have to be so excited. And as we transition now into the future of this team, you know, looking back at the players that opted out or we lost, the best days are ahead. And whenever we get into Trent Williams' press conference clip, which I'm so excited to share with you guys, these players recognize there is something special that is happening and has not happened yet. They haven't reached it yet, but it's close. So hopefully you guys will pencil out some time next Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Hot Mic. Those are going to be the two ways to watch that. So uh, just please wait for that. Really, really excited. Now let's move on to some Dion Jordan talk because the 49ers had in three separate edge guys to see if uh, they were going to, you know, who they were going to bring in. You can't have enough depth, especially this year. You know, you already cut down to 80 from 90, so we're already 10 players short. They did expand the practice squad, but that hasn't come into play yet. So you're you're already 10 guys less than you usually are in offseason. And you want you want it to hurt more? <laughs> Tonight should have been the kickoff of the Hall of Fame game, but it's canceled. So was the entire preseason. You know, I went back and looked at the calendar last year where we are. Preseason games would have been underway. Uh, we would have been covering joint practices, things like that. We don't have it. So hopefully this everything can kind of shift away from that. So they bring in three edge rushers for physicals. Demontre Moore, we all love them. I really wish that's who they would have went with, but that's okay. Ezekiel Ansah and Deion Jordan, the former number three overall pick. Um, they end up signing DeAndre Jordan. They still have not. I haven't seen the numbers yet. They haven't been released yet. But when those filter out, I'm sure it's going to be a huge, uh, a small deal with a lot of incentives. And so who is this kid? Okay, ten and a half career sacks. He's had problems with alcohol and substance abuse, injuries. Um, but the talent is still there. It's there. Now, what's his role going to be for the 49ers? It's a situational pass rusher at best. He is not a lock <laughs> to make this roster. And if he is, he's probably the fifth edge off the uh, in rotation. So, obviously, Nick Bosa's one, Eric Armstead, D. Ford. Those guys are in a tier by themselves. Then you have Ronald Blair. And then fifth would be Deion Jordan. So, you're talking about a guy that, best case scenario, is going to get five to ten snaps a game. And, you know, he's put up some production in the past, but he can't stay healthy. Perhaps this is why he's bounced around a lot. You know, Raiders, Seahawks, uh, all over the place. But you can't get enough depth at the edge position. You can't get enough depth at the offensive line position. I, I really do expect them to add another person there. Um, but you, you got to welcome him. And you got to be excited about what this person can bring uh, kind of to the table because he's playing on a defensive line that is the best in the NFL. He's never been able to say that before. And so I think that that plays a role in there. Um, and so I think that's important. You know, we talked about DJ Reed. We pick up one of their formers. They pick up one of our formers. It's just kind of where it is. Now, what I want to do now, and I'm, ex I'm excited about this. I've never done this before. But I've been spending a little bit more time with video, and I want to go through the press conferences that have happened the last three days. The 49ers, as they're not showing any of the training camp practices themselves, there's no video, there's no press there, we don't get anything. So what they're trying to do is make the players a little bit more available to the press uh, through the press conferences. So uh, we're going to start off right off the bat with Jimmy Garoppolo, the handsome man himself, um, and just talk a little bit about this year versus last year because if you remember this exact same point last year jimmy garoppolo's we're, we're all talking about the knee brace right oh is he gonna wear the knee brace oh my gosh can he move can he do all these things oh well what is what's he do he just goes and takes his team to the super bowl in his very first year starting so when asked about the difference between 2019 and the 2020 season this is what jimmy garoppolo had to say absolutely yeah i think uh the speed that we bring in, especially in the offensive skill group, I love that. You know, that helps with the run after catch, and you know, it makes my job a little more tough getting them the ball on in, on time and accurately. It's uh, it's a little different with speedsters like that, but it's a luxury that I love to have. And so, uh, yeah, I think Kyle and John and the whole front office. I mean, just bringing in good people, people that work hard, people that you know all think relatively the same. I think that's uh, it's a big key to our success. And 
you know, bringing in uh, the new old lineman, uh, bringing Trent, Tom. It's a uh, it's a great group up front, and those guys. It's um, you know, it's it's I love having them, and they're just uh, <laughs> it's been it's been fun so far. And I think that this is, you know, one of the things that we miss on. The fact that there is so much new speed and size that has been added to this roster as opposed to what we had last year. You know, Debo is a question mark. We went into last year thinking Dante Pettis was our number one wide receiver. Things change. (laughs) The depth, even though you've lost Emmanuel Sanders, uh, Dante Pettis still around. We don't know what his role is going to be. Debo's hurt. But you bring in so many more guys, and they're so much more healthy at this point than they were last year. So much more healthy. Um, and Jarek McKinnon is going to be one of those guys that's talked about a lot today. Um, but, again, back to the idea of Jimmy Garoppolo's knee. Let's hear it from himself, uh, what he has to say about that. It's night and day compared to where I was last year this time. This this time last year was – uh. More so getting back into, um, you know, being in a live pocket, having live bullets flying around me and getting used to that. So well, we're past that. I haven't really thought about it in a long time. But as far as the uh, mobility and things like that, you know, it's it's whatever Kyle calls for. I think uh, my knee's in a good position to, you know, it's able to do whatever it needs to do at this point. And, and that's the best news that we could hope for, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think he's still going to wear the brace. He mentioned last year that he's probably going to wear the brace for the rest of his career. And, and it never really showed in a bad way during the season. Um, we, we, there's no, you know, you don't take back. He even had a couple scrambles that looked really, really good where he went for first downs, uh, things like that. So I think that you can look at it and say, man, Jimmy Garoppolo, who I think by all accounts, was probably in that 7 to 10 range as far as quarterback rankings for the 2019 season. Uh, You could put him higher if you wanted to. The interceptions, the fumbles are in there. But he's had one year of starting. One. Just one. Um, And then coming off that ACL last year, that had to be an issue early on. But, you know, he overcame that. Um, I think that we have more ahead of him. And what's interesting, and again, you know, talking about Jarek McKinnon Jet, when Jimmy Garoppolo was asked... You know, who are you most excited about? Uh, this is what he had to say. I mean, being a former quarterback, uh, it's it's kind of a, it's a rarity to have a skill position guy who sees the game like a quarterback still. And uh, Jet does a great job of that. I mean, even just throwing routes on air this offseason, he, uh, he runs them differently than most running backs. And he has a feel that's like a receiver, but he feels space like a quarterback. It's, it's very unique. And uh I'm excited to get him back, man. It's it's been a while. You know, we came in together, me and him, uh, when we both signed here, and it's uh, it's 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 exciting to have him back. Jarek McKinnon. We're gonna have a couple other players talk about him too. The overall hype on <laughs> every single player for this team, it seems like Jarek McKinnon is the guy everybody believes in. And if you've seen the workout videos from this off season. The dude is just jacked. <laughs> um, uh, he's just jacked. It's just what it is. Now, let's transition now to the defensive side. And good old Uncle Sherm steps up. And, you know, one of the questions that's interesting for Sherman is because he's one of the chief uh, people in the NFLPA. He's one of the people that helped um, negotiate and organize the COVID testing, the acclimation period, what it's like inside, how often testing is going on, what what are all the protocols. He's one of the people, the architects of this. And so whenever they asked him, you know, how safe do you feel returning to training camp, this was his response. Relatively safe. I mean, just as safe as I do in the rest of society, honestly. Um, you know, at the end of the day, once you get through all the 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 – the hoops you got to jump through and all the protocols and everything. I mean, you get on the field, football is, is football as, you know, you know it. Um, you know, obviously this is in place to make sure that the season can go on. And obviously, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, chatter out there about baseball and all this. Um, but I think it's been fine. Um, I think guys have, 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 have adjusted and adapted in the way they needed to. Um, and, I, you know, outside of, the testing every day and maneuvering the meeting rooms being different. I mean, I think it's been as normal as you can be during this time. Yeah, I love that he's wearing a mask in that clip during the press conference. Um, we'll see that from Raheem Mostert as well the following day, uh, but I'll share that with you in just a couple of minutes. But, you know, if you look at 
the way and he even goes on to say Richard Sherman I didn't cut this clip but he said you know I think we're in a better position than most teams because we're based out of Santa Clara the nightlife isn't like and he mentions like Atlanta Miami Texas cities things like that uh Santa Clara I love Santa Clara it's awesome but yeah it's not the place that people go to for bachelor parties uh if you will <laughs> so he does talk about that now if you look back up lead wide league wide and you kind of take a, a view of the big picture, the NFL's doing okay so far. There were 107 confirmed cases of NFL players during the offseason. Once players reported, got tested, you know, left, came back, got tested again, cleared for workouts, which are starting all across the NFL now, 56 positives since training camp has started. That's a little less than 3%. The NFL's goal is to keep it below 5%. Now, uh, what do those numbers mean? You know, there's with 80 people per team, 32 teams, you know, you got, it's about 2,500 players in the NFL. And so 5% yeah, adds up a little bit. I mean, you're talking close, you know, you're talking over 100 players testing positive at a given time, but trying to keep that number manageable and the testing every day is going to be great. The big hurdle, okay, is going to be when traveling starts. This is where baseball's had their issue. Uh, because, again, NHL, NBA, they're in a bubble. They're not leaving. A MLB is traveling everywhere. They're flying back and forth. The good thing about football is you play one game a week, uh, so it's a lot less traveling, but I'm sure it's still going to rear its ugly head. Um, but the numbers are something we got to watch. Uh, the one thing that I'm pretty sure of is we're going to get week one. <laughs> we're going to get to week one. There's no doubt about that. Hopefully it continues past that. But that's kind of where we're at. Now let's uh, stay on the defensive side. I want to give Fred Warner a chance to talk. LB1, the best linebacker in the NFL. Um, and basically the idea was, man, he's he's only going into his third year. So how has this kid done what he's done, and how is this offseason different from his first two seasons? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a little different. You know, luckily, where I was training down uh, in Southern California, it, it stayed open for the most part. There was about a week or two uh, where it got a little, a little hairy, where making sure that we were following the guidelines, they had to shut down for a little bit. So then I'm like, okay, well, where, where am I going to train next? Like, not wanting to to miss a day um but luckily it ended up working out and uh, you know everything kind of worked itself out but i think any, if anything it, it gave more of a reason to just lock into training because there wasn't much else to do uh you know obviously you're in quarantine and there's not a lot of things to do outside and uh you know just obviously it was just going going to training and then going home going train go home so uh you know i, I got i got everything i needed out of this off season and I think that this has been a common theme throughout as we're getting to talk to players. You know, you talk about George Kittle. You talk about Kyle Juszczyk. You talk about Fred Warner. You talk about Kendrick Bourne. There's nothing to do. So what are these players doing? They're working out. <laughs> and they're in shape. And that is great news, especially whenever you're talking about a team that's returning as many starters as the 49ers are. They're loaded. You lost three starters, you replaced them all with first-round picks. <laughs> I mean, that that's just the reality of the situation. Trent Williams, oh, is he the number four overall pick? <laughs> like, you go get Javon Kinlaw, the number 14 pick. You go get uh, Brandon Ayuk, you know, picked in the mid-20s. So you replacing missed talent with talent, and you're not taking the step back because players are unhealthy or out of shape. Now, I'm sure there are some players, and I'm sure those players, they're not allowing to go talk to the podium. But for the current situation, the team's still super, super hungry. Um, now, the next player that came up during the press conferences, and I'm sure your Twitter lines were blowing up because he killed this press conference. We're going to have three clips from Raheem Mostert, who has been probably one of the most talked about 49ers during the offseason. It's never a good thing. You don't want to talk about players during the offseason because that's bad. <laughs> Usually bad news, get in trouble, contract disputes, injuries, Things like that. So uh, that was bad. But Raheem Mostert stepped up, and he started talking about his family and kind of where he is at. So let's just hear from him now. Um, yeah, obviously, as you, you mentioned earlier, that I'm not going to be uh, opting out. But um, it was a long, very long and tough uh, discussion with my wife. Um, right now, our current situation, um, she's back in Cleveland. Um, 
with the family with my my uh 13 month old son um as well as we're expecting our second child so um and and at the end of september so um the the discussions we've had man have been long and extensive um but you know she understands the the importance of of me being out here and you know being able to provide for the family and um all those all those good things and so we've had more positive talks than negative and uh we we've been able to communicate on a day-to-day basis um you know just to understand each other's feelings and to make sure you know um she's at ease especially during a time like this with the um, the uncertainty of the of covid as well as you know having the birth of our our second boy so um you know it's it's been a blessing that we're we've both been on the same page um you know we've both had nights where, where we've we've cried on each other and you know just talked about especially before I left um you know just talking about how we're going to manage this whole deal and uh I told her flat out hey look I don't want you guys to even come to Cali cuz um you know I don't want I don't want uh you to be infected I don't want my 1 year old to be infected as well you know as as a new the new addition to our family so um we were able to work it out and and I'm here so she understands and and like I said it's truly a blessing and you know he goes on I didn't cut this clip but they were asked like you're expect his he's supposed to have a second kid in September which is the start of the season and they asked like what are you going to do when your kid's born and he goes on and he elaborates and how he's constantly talking back and forth to his wife but he said you know I'm preparing to miss it he, he's going to miss his second child's birth uh, because he's so committed to this team. And, you know, it, it's just so crazy because a month ago, everybody was talking about how he's not committed and all these things. No, this is a guy that is the definition of committed. And he fought for his family and he, he won. The 49ers gave him some guaranteed, which is great. Now this guy, I love it, man. Raheem Moster is one of my favorite humans. Forget football. He's so committed to this team, and I love it. I love it. I hate that he's missing his family because people won't wear masks. <laughs> I, I hate that. I just can't stand it. Uh, but it's what it is. I love the fire. I love the passion. And he even goes on and talks about his contract. And so uh, here we go. Let's hear from him. And then, yeah, you know, it was it was long and, and, and you know, diff- difficulties. But in the end, we were able to sit down and have communication and, you know, um, it is, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, I knew that it was going to be right, uh, regardless of how it played out, but I knew that at the end it was going to be all right. And, and, um, I was still going to be a nine and no matter what, um, it's just, you know, moving pieces and, and trying to figure out what you got to do. Um, not only for, for contract wise, but as, as a business and then, you know, as family, um, it, it's, it helps a lot when, you know, everybody's on the same page and, um, this is a family and we all understand that as you can see, like what we've been through these past three, four years, um, with the organization, um, going, you know, six and 10, uh, and then the following year, four and 12. So it just tells you, and then Super Bowl run last year just tells you that this is a, a family based organization. And, um, you know, they really pride themselves. We all really pride ourselves on being a family and, you know, who, what family doesn't have, you know, those, those problems, like, I argue with my little brother, you know, it's one of those things where, Hey, look, I argue with him, but I also love him at the same time. That's, that's what's going on here. So, um, we, we eventually got it fixed. And, um, and like I said, it's a blessing and I'm glad to be here. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Oh, it gets me pumped up. I'm ready to go work out after this one. I don't know about you guys, but just talking about the family atmosphere that Kyle Shanahan has generated. Uh, and this is a guy that's been with several other teams bounce around. He's a journeyman. Um, he is a father. He's a, he's a family man. He gets it. And he's very happy that he is there. And I'm so excited. And when asked what he is going to do, oh, this is great. What are you going to do? What are your expectations for this 2020 season? Here we go, baby. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just want to go out there and be dominant. You know, when, when I step out onto that field, I want, I want everybody to say that's a bad mofo, you know, um, he's somebody that, we can't take lightly. Um, you know, I I, I want to put fear in, in other teams' eyes, and um, you know that's that's my mindset. You know, even when I'm playing Gunner, I, I just want want people to know I'm the best special teams player to ever play this game. Ah, that's, that's whew, dominant. 
I'm a bad mofo. That is awesome. I, I need that shirt. Uh, I need that shirt. I, I have this one on right now. This is the Debo chain snatching t-shirt. Uh, compliments of 49ers Hive, which let me just give them a plug. I wouldn't even plan on doing this, but I love this shirt. Um 49ers Hive, reach out to them. If you want one of these shirts, they do a hell of a job. Their graphics department is legit, and they're pretty cheap. They basically give them away. Reach out to 49ers Hive at 49ers Hive on Twitter. DM them. They're open. Tell them you want a Debo shirt or whatever. Um, rep your team, baby. I, I want a – I'm a bad mofo shirt of Raheem Mostert. That's what I want. And, you know, you go back to – that press conference, he he went for 20-plus minutes. He was going – it was an awesome interview. If you haven't watched it, I, I recommend going and checking it out. But the idea is this. They asked him, man, tell us about the wide receivers and what you've seen. He goes on to say, Jalen Hurd is the most physical wide receiver he has ever seen in his entire career. Now, I understand teammates are always going to hype each other up. I get that. It makes sense. Uh, they're, they're a family. They're a unit. I get it. But there's no reason to put that type of compliment on somebody that's never played in the regular season. He got injured in the preseason, if you remember. Completely cleared. Didn't get put on the pup. He's full go. Um, Jalen Hurd. And you talk about Debo. You talk about this team. You talk about Jarek McKinnon. You talk about all these different things that this team is about. And, and I think, you know, one of the things from an outside standpoint, you know, let, let's go to today's press conference, which just finished up about 45 minutes ago. You know, you look at the new left tackle in Trent Williams, who has not been around the 49ers. He hasn't even been around the NFL for a year and a half. They asked him what he's excited about and what it's like on the 49ers, and this is what he had to say. And um, as far as who I'm most looking forward to seeing, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Jet, you know, and at the two years, kind of, you know, I, the way he's looked in the offseason. I just can't fathom him not being a, a breakout player. Um, obviously, I want to see George up close. That's going to be exciting. And seeing, just seeing that defense, man, seeing those linebackers, the three linebackers we have, seeing how they fly around, seeing how well the DBs communicate, and seeing how freakish the D-line is. I'm just kind of – I just want to get this team to a game just so I can – you know, it feels like college again just, you know, when we, we had – for the three of the top four picks in the draft, you know, that's, that's I haven't got that feeling since then. Look at those freaking arms. He is on the uh, the John Chapman uh, <laughs> bicep plan. I'm, that's facetious, obviously. For those of you that are listening audio audio only, I just attempted to flex my weak arms. But Trent Williams, his biceps are bigger than his head, and he's got a big head too. Uh, but the dude is just jacked. You know, one of the questions or concerns is, man, how ready is this guy going to be to play football? Um, and you know, one of another questions, I don't have the clip for it, but they asked him, did you think about holding out? And he laughed. Um, he laughed at the reporter and was like, oh my God, no, there was 0% chance. I was, I haven't played in a year and a half. The guy's so ready. He's in shape. He's one of the most athletic. You can make the argument. He's the second most athletic offensive lineman in the past decade. And he's only <laughs> number two behind Joe Staley, the great beast himself. Now, Bosa was the last person to talk, and, I mean, Bosa's just so great, period. Uh, he doesn't bring a lot of energy to the press conferences, but he's just who he is. Uh, he's exciting on the field and kind of calm and collected off the field. But when asked, you got to remember, what was Bosa going through last year? Uh, one, coming off the combine and traveling around and workouts and interviews and the draft and contracts, all those things. Then he shows up, and he's got a hamstring. He gets his ankle rolled up. Oh, he's always injured. He's always injured. He's always injured. So the question was asked, very similar to Jimmy Garoppolo, what is 2019? Uh, how was that different than 2020 offseason? This is what he had to say. I ended up um, coming out here and having the injury, the hamstring, and and then getting rolled up on my ankle last year. So it was. I definitely didn't get all the benefits that I wanted to last year, but after six months of training, uh, me, Joey, and and him for, uh, like I said, six months. Uh, I think I've gotten all the benefits, and I'm feeling it out here in these um, in these workouts and these runs we're doing. So um, I feel like I'm 
by far in the best shape that I've ever been. Um, I don't look much different because we don't train to bodybuild. We train to play football, and um, I think it'll show. Imagine Nick Bosa being in better shape, the best shape of his life, the defensive rookie of the year, the rookie of the year. Uh, Going into this season, he has the second best odds to become the defensive player of the year, and he's saying he's in the best shape of his life. It's hard to find things, and maybe it's just because it's the pre it's the preseason. We don't have a preseason this year. Maybe it's because it's training camp. I'm level ten, baby. I'm level ten. I, I could not be more excited from a football standpoint of where this team currently is and where they're going. Um, very, very excited, and we're going to get to see some football. There's no doubt in my mind we're going to get to week one. <laughs> Hopefully, everybody wear your mask, wash your hands, stay away from others, and we can have this football season. Oh, we need it. We need it, baby. We need it. Um, But anyway, I I just wanted to go through those things today. Uh, You know, there's one more article that I'd like to talk about. You know, this was put out on The Athletic, and they were basically, the idea was this. I'm sorry, it was ESPN. Uh, Bill Barnwell, he went through all 32 teams and talked about current players and where they measure up for final Hall of Fame standings, okay? And this was the idea. So for the 49ers, he talked about four players, um, Nick Bosa, George Kittle, Trent Williams, Richard Sherman. And basically the idea was if their career ended right now, Okay, they didn't play any more further. What are their chances of getting into the Hall of Fame? Now, remember, uh, once you retire or you're out of football, you have to wait five years, and then you're eligible after that. Um, so Richard Sherman definitely had the best. Uh, he had a 70 to 99% chance. Um, Richard Sherman's got six Pro Bowls. He's probably the best corner of the decade on you know Super Bowl winning team with the Seattle team. Uh, lost the Super Bowl with Seattle, lost Super Bowl with the 49ers. So... I, I don't think there's a doubt Richard Sherman's going to make the Hall of Fame, but you, you get one more Pro Bowl season. You get one more Super Bowl, and that dude is a first ballot Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, no doubt. Um, next up, he had Trent Williams, actually, which if he ended right now 40 to 69%, nice, um, into, the super, into the Hall of Fame. We forget, and maybe we don't forget because I keep reminding everybody, Trent Williams made seven straight Pro Bowls. Now, I don't think that Pro Bowls are a measure of how great you are, but it's one of the clearest indicators that people who guess who votes, guess who votes on Hall of Famers, the press, um, give attention to. And Trent Williams has had that. He's been at the top of his game for a long time before Washington tried to screw up his career. Uh, But now he's back in a position and for a team where he's going to be able to play his best football. And he's in a contract year, so he's going to ball out because he needs money. He hasn't been paid in two years uh, before the 49ers. So uh, Trent Williams, they put him just at about a 50-50 shot. You get one more Pro Bowl or you show that you can work in this system, you know, with this team, and it's going to get a lot of media coverage. He's going to be in there. Now, George Kittle... He put at 10 to 30% chance, and a lot of this just has to do with longevity of career. We have not had George Kittle that long. Three years. Three years. That's it. Uh, obviously broke the all-time receiving record for tight ends. He's the be- one of the best uh, run-blocking, pass-blocking tight end in the NFL. He's a team leader. He's a captain. He's the energy on and off the field. He's everything that a captain is supposed to be. He doesn't have his contract yet. Still showed up. Uh, no hold out there. And so I, no doubt Kittle can be the best of all time at the tight end position. I think that's Gronk right now. Uh, you know, if you want to go super old school and you want to talk like Ditka and things like that, that's fine. Kellen Winslow. I don't mind those discussions, but I, I think it's gotta be Gronk and Tony Gonzalez at the very top of the list right now. And if Kittle's career continues on this trajectory, there's no telling <laughs> he he could be one of the greatest of all time despite positions. And that's kind of hard from the tight end position, but he's such a key integral piece. Um, I, I'm excited to see what this kid's going to be. And then Nick Bosa, he put at 10 to 30% as well. Now, it, you know, I thought this was really, really cool because he went through, Bill Barnwell did, and looked at all the defensive rookie of the years and how many have made it into the Hall of Fame. There's only been 32 eligible defensive rookie of the years to be voted in the hall of fame of those 32 only six got in 
So, uh, you know, six divided by 32, you're kind of looking at the numbers there. That's why he gave the 10 to 30%. But you could not, if you're redrafting in the NFL today, okay, you're going to wipe every single slate clean and you are redrafting. You can pick anybody, all 32 teams. Guess what? Nick Bose is going to be the first person taken that's not a quarterback. It's going to go quarterback, 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 Bosa. That's just the reality of the situation. So the fact that you could have four Hall of Famers on this roster, and we're not talking about a lot of other greats either. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of players out there on this roster that are legit, but we're talking Hall of Fame level talent. And I think that's something. So... You know, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, it took a lot of work. So let me know uh, in the comments and things like that. If you like, uh, you can DM me on Twitter, as always, at JL underscore Chapman. You can email me, 49ers Rush Podcast um, at gmail.com. But let me know if you like the clips. Let me know if you like, you know, all that stuff and obviously the trailer. Also, I do want to put this out there. You know, we did the charity league for... Um, Toys for Tots, the Fantasy Football League against me um, to raise money for an autographed Jerry Rice football. We filled that thing up in like one day. Uh, now I've got five people extra, and they want to start another league. So I, I said, fine, let's do it. So this one, I made it a little bit cheaper. This is for an autographed George Kittle football. Okay, so here's what happens. You email me, and you better hurry because it's going to fill up today. I guarantee it. Email me or Twitter DM. 49ers Rush Podcast, gmail.com. Um, it's going to be $75. I'll send you the information. Every penny, I'm paying too. Every penny goes to Toys for Tots. We're helping kids. That's what this is about. But it's a way to kind of have fun together and compete in fantasy football um, against me. And so email me. Let me know your information. I'll send you the payment information. We'll get you in and we'll draft. We'll have a fantasy football league for this year for however many games we got. And the winner gets the football. Uh, very simple. The money goes to the kids. We have fun. And the winner gets a football. If I win, I'm giving the football to my son. George Kittle's his favorite uh, player. So you got to beat me, which I'm I'm pretty good, actually. I, I was going to be like uh, kind of undersell it. I'm I'm – Trent Williams arm giant size good at fantasy football. So I'll throw that out there. So challenge, come get some of these little bitty P shooters. <laughs> I just flexed again. Sorry, embarrassing myself, but that's okay. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's podcast. Remember, quest for six next Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Please be there. And until next time, cannot say thank you enough for all the support. Stay strong, faithful. <laughs>